uh, like, it's hard to explain. Maybe a different symptom, symptomology. Yeah, yeah. No, that Even though sense. the I, physiology yeah, yeah, yeah. is I kind of the same. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that makes sense. So but we, it could be nonsense, yeah. So we relate, it is nonsense. And Steve had that for a while, and we're saying that that longevity leads to a certain level of emotional pain. Yeah. And does that create a power dynamic between you and yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Wait, what? Is there now a power dynamic between potentially you... And, there's now a power dynamic between what you want to achieve and what your body will let you achieve. Yeah. Right? And who's in power? your body or yourself. So potentially when you try to do too much, your body will react and cause you pain. Well, I think, I think basically what I've learned from like this is that um, it just kind of magnifies and brings your attention to certain, um, certain behaviors of the mind, behaviors of the self, behaviors of us as human beings, which everybody else completely like is submersed in but they're not aware of it. Yeah, but so, it's, for it's, example, and this is like what you're saying, yeah. is like, I think there's always a tension, tension between the ideal self yeah, and, the, and the, the actual, actual self, self right? right? And so what you're talking about is just that that becomes more like, aware, like more present, right? So I think that power dynamic exists between, in everyone. It's just, it's more... Aware in you. Aware right? in something like this. But being more self-aware of that, that power dynamic, does that enable you to achieve more? Well, I think it, it brings you... Maybe not achieve more, but yeah, it just brings you closer to, who, to yourself, to maybe your soul or to your core. Well, yeah I, th- yeah, I think it also helps you develop other elements of the self because then you, you, you see your limitations and then through like having a, like a, like a more limited reality, you begin to discover your own limitlessness yeah, in but that's different a areas. Limited physical reality, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why it opens up your spiritual realities and, and your, your mental realities right? and stuff like that. And you realize like ways in which to transcend your limits. And I think this is why limits is such a like So actually so if limiting your physical reality expands your mental and your spiritual reality. Do you believe that? I think to some degree I don't know if expands is the right word, but I think um allows you at least to explore them. So people who are physically impaired, do you think they have a greater... I think they probably do have a greater mental capacity for their awareness and surroundings, but I don't know about a spiritual capacity. So, no, I think... Well, it's quite normal that uh, you have people who get sick and then they go into a spirit... Like, go very much into spirituality and stuff. And I was thinking about this the other day, and at first I thought it was because you're... You know, a lot of the reason, like I've gone in this way and people yeah. go in this way, is because you're trying to make sense. You know, you're trying to make sense and make meaning out of your yeah, life, yeah. so you go into the spirituality. But I think actually, it's not just about that. Um, at least from my personal sickness, there's actually a spirituality to the to the to phys- the sickness. To the sickness. No. To the physiology. So there, would you go as far as saying the sickness has its has a soul or has its own being that you need to try and access? So. Do you think it's something no. uh, within you that's not meant to be within you, or is it part of you? So I think that you, when you, um, when you get sick, you have a, your body becomes more sensitized, and you become like you begin to live a more tactile reality because you're so aware of like a physiological yeah. existence, and right? you're aware of what will cause that to diminish, right? Yeah, you're more aware. Of what you're more aware of that, yeah. and so I think you become, in a way, more in your body. And then through that, become more connected to the universe, the things around you. And that's, I think, what enables a spiritual reality. And I would actually say that the symptoms that I had, like when I was really unwell, yeah. like now I'm doing pretty well, but... Um, I mean, not, not mentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> but uh, like there's three years that I remember, like in retrospection, and I have a certain nostalgia for them. Because I was in a lot of pain and I wasn't sure about how Emotional to extract. Emotional pain or physical pain? Or physical, 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 physical pain. pain. Physical pain. Um, but my world, my my life was like incandescent. Everything was so like I was hyper connected to everything, and I and, and I. Was, but how did you feel about that hyper connection state? Like, well, that's what led me into poetry and art and all this writing and all this kind of. Uh, oh, no way. I started having these like kind of visions almost, or like uh, perceiving the world in like in this very immaterial way. And I started writing papers on it. So, but if I was thinking, coming at that in a, like a logical perspective, were you hallucinating? Were you like not eating enough? 
were you actually having a viral infection? Were you like yeah. very unwell? No, no. So I don't know. For me, this is a very interesting question. Is yeah. that everybody? We sometimes when we take whether it's drugs or yeah, sickness yeah. or something, we have these like really like incandescent realities yeah, or like yeah. experiences and visions, right? And we just want to ascribe truth to that. Yeah, yeah. And we believe. But in why? Them. We believe in them completely, right? Yeah. Why do we believe in that more than our everyday reality? Good. Like, were you happier in that other reality, in the hyperconnected reality? I was less, I was less uh, stable, so the movements were like more, more like up and down. There was like more sadness and more happiness. Um, and I felt more, well, I felt more connected and in a way more disconnected. What, simultaneously or like you achieve no, a no, connection no. and then disconnect? And then achieve, yeah, 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 pretty much. Like, so maybe it's just exaggerated realities of this current reality. Yeah, and it's just a hypersensitivity. Like, I think that's yeah, exactly. really all my condition was, is like a hyper-physical sensitivity, and I think it's linked to an emotional sensitivity. Do you think that you're still highly emotionally sensitive? Does that mean that people can cause you more emotional pain than yeah, you can cause sure. them? Um, yeah, well, it depends how sensitive they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Are you highly emotionally sensitive? Uh, people keep telling me I'm highly emotionally intelligent, but... Uh, is that your, other, your ideal self? Yeah, I think... That? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I think... Uh, I wouldn't say I'm very emotionally sensitive, but I think maybe I'm the opposite to you and then I'm quite emotionally cut off. Yeah, but so I think, you, I think you are sensitive, I'm, but you're just like quite repressed. Yeah, I'm quite repressed maybe. I'm just very dismissive, I think, as well. But, maybe that's but I think that's because you can't... Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? maybe it's because I'm repressed or maybe it's because I just uh, don't value a lot of people's opinions. But do you not? Or are you just scared of their opinions? Uh, I think... As human beings, and I think we do it a lot in this podcast, we, we say a lot of things that we don't actually believe. Okay. Right? We so say a lot of theories right that we think you know, make sense in that time, but I think, we, we, like we said, we ascribe a lot of truth to things that we don't actually consider to be true. Yeah, but sometimes there's like... Uh, and sometimes there, there is some truth. I, yeah, of course. But also you can yeah. find truth, like a person can find yeah. truth in, some, in a lie. Yeah, exactly. Right? But also I think... With regards to being dismissive, uh, when people see something negative about me emotionally, but I'm also dismissive about when people say things positive. Yeah. I mean, I don't react very much to either either side of the spectrum. You know, when people compliment me or when people say something negative about me, I treat that the same. Yeah, but why? Uh, because I think it's good to just live in that space where you know your flaws and you know your uh, positives and you work on them. No, but you're rejecting them. No, but oh no, because I've got I've got awareness of what I think my yeah, flaws yeah. are. So nobody are. and nobody really knows you. As nobody well really knows me. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Nobody really knows me that well. So who who can say something and you like genuinely take it for like take it? On board? Uh, so maybe it's gone to a point now where maybe no one. No one. Really? Yeah, yeah. Can I never make you think about something? Uh, well, I think we think about something every time we do a podcast. But could I ever make you think about yourself? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yes. No, I think so. You're like my best friend, right? So I think I would take on board whatever you said. Whether I would do anything about it is a different question. Yeah, yeah, but that's just laziness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what wait, about you, though? Wait, but what about if your parents say something? No, then I'm nonsense. just very dismissive. I'm like, this is stupid. Like, yeah. <laughs> They're just old. <laughs> they just want me to get married. But uh, so does then that mean you're the opposite to that? Where, you know, whatever anyone says, regardless of how well they know you, you would respond. I'll take it into account, I think. I think I'll take ev- pretty much everything somebody says into account. Um, but there mean- are certain things I can be dismissive yeah. of. But normally it's dismissive of myself, right? So, like, like, one part of myself will accept that. It will hit a spot, and then I'll dismiss that because I don't want to accept that quantity. No, and then there's another power dynamic there. So if somebody says you're, um, you know, you're, you're ugly, and then no, a part no, of no me... No one would ever say that, though. No, no, no. That's, no, that's, that's not say. Yeah. Okay, fine. You're not the best looking guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right? I only want to have like three babies with you. <laughs> Something. And then, and I feel like an insecurity around that. Then my, a part of myself might hear that from the other person. And then the other part of myself will reject what the part of that yeah, part yeah, of myself yeah, yeah, yeah. has heard. Right? Yeah, so there's that power dynamic within yourself. Within right? yourself. But then that insecurity, does that lead to you lashing out violently? On my other self. Or the person that said that to you. No, I don't think I do that very much. Maybe sometimes. 
Maybe like I don't know. Maybe yeah, my it's, sister. Or it's something. all violence, a reaction to something. Yeah, normally, like normally, violence comes out of fear. Like it can, comes out of fear of like losing power or being feeling insignificant or feeling like um, threatened or. It's all like violence is all out of fear, right? Yes. Yeah, so how do you control fear? The ego, I think. You got to like dissolve the ego. Dissolve the ego would result in absence of fear. Yeah, I think so. I'm scared of the dark. Well, Actually, no, I, I'm not I think no, I think it would just recalibrate our fear because fear is important to stay alive. Yeah, right? yeah from a like a biological but, point of view, right? Yeah, and yeah. we, I think, I think if we got rid of our ego, we'd still be scared of a tiger. <laughs> yeah, and I'd still be scared of like roller coasters. Yeah, but it would be like a momentary fear. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it like wouldn't a, be like a perpetual like a state of fear. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so you think people are in a perpetual state of fear in like a relationship? I think I don't think I know anybody who's not in some perpetual state of fear of something. What are you afraid of? Like that this podcast might end soon. <laughs> <laughs> like get it. we'll never stop. We'll never stop. We'll never stop. No, I just meant this episode. Oh, this episode. And I won't get to say everything that I wanted to say, and then people will think, <laughs> like, he's this, this, and this. Well, what more did you want to say? It's already at 26 minutes. I don't know. We've made six microwave meals in this time. Ah, have we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they burned? <laughs> no, we'll give them to the home. Yeah, yeah, of course. Why would we eat our own Why microwave meals? <laughs> we don't eat microwave meals. Exactly. Of course yeah. not. We've also, I think there was something I said on, um, you know, on the past podcast. Yeah. That oh, it was yeah. like... No, was it intimacy one or something? Oh, okay. oh no, maybe it was one we didn't release. <laughs> but no, no, I just said that, you know, you just need to get the sofa. You need, just need an Ikea catalogue. I just want to clarify that uh, I don't buy my furniture from Ikea. <laughs> Ikea. It's obviously from Clar- from Bonhams. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 we yeah. only shop at Sotheby's. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bonhams. <laughs> so there's so much art in uh, your living room. It yeah. It's all your own art. Yeah, yeah, of course, because I wouldn't pay somebody else to make... Wait, wait, so it's so egotistical that you only have your own art in your living room, and yet you truly believe that you are fearful. So if you dissolve your own ego, then you would no longer have fear. Does that mean you would no longer have your art on your living room walls? No, no, no. This is like, it, it's only once... No, no, I think once I uh, dissolve my ego, then all my art will go on my walls. So whose art is all this? Huh? But all your art is on your walls. Oh, so you're playing... No, I've got, most of it's under my bed. <laughs> oh, you mean the walls will be completely covered? Yeah, yeah. At, quite at the minute, I'm only putting uh, stuff on them because I don't have space anywhere. <laughs> well, you don't have space underneath your bed. Yeah. So there's not enough space, so you've got to like, start hanging it out. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, it's true. <laughs> huh? but, I'm so, but I'm so scared of being perceived as egotistical or being the egotistical person or perceived by myself. Oh, so your fear is e- that you're... Yeah, but that's the ego itself. Yeah, but is your ideal self an egotistical maniac? No. Your ideal self is what? It's like a sedated yogi. <laughs> yeah? Is that why you try not to do too much? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's if your it. ideal self is a sedated yogi, maybe this illness is a manifestation of that ideal self. Oh, so maybe I'm just like, I'm just killing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just killing it in life. Yeah. This is why we're friends. What if- <laughs> Because <laughs> they're gonna have so many issues going on in my life, yeah. <laughs> and you'll just tell me that it's like me transcending reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that what life is about? The, uh, reality, or just ignoring your problems and like egotistically ascribing some transcendent yogic state to them? Yeah, but we've said this in the past. Like people are too quick to acknowledge their problems. People need to let their problems resonate, and then really affect them, and then work on them. No, but this happens naturally. Like, people have no choice over this. People only start changing when it starts affecting them in a deep level and they have no choice but to stare it in the face and, like, you know, buckle to it. Whereas you're power. saying that we need to counter that and maybe change it earlier. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying anything. <laughs> I don't know. This is, we've covered a lot of things. Violence, power, fear. Yeah. What do you think the takeaway message would be? Um, if, you, if you're um, thinking about, like, hurting someone maybe punch them <laughs> yeah, rather, rather than, than like yeah. Rather than <laughs> yeah, maybe we need to start resorting to more physical violence rather than emotional <laughs> is, that, is that our message that's the message yeah so the news is going to be like 17,000 Indians died yesterday <laughs> <laughs> not to the point of uh, causing death but uh, yeah, yeah. maybe just pinch someone instead of emotionally abusing them <laughs>